Asus is another dual screen monitor laptop. Who would have guessed? The mad folks at the R&D department must be working hell over time with their designs and whatever because this is the best interpretation of the dual monitor laptop I've seen in their entire lineup. With the ZenBook 17 Fold being kind of cool, the dual steals the limelight in many ways. There's five modes to configure it into. Its keyboard not only looks and feels good but connects to the laptop seamlessly. It has dual 14-inch full-size 3K 120Hz OLED touchscreens and so much more. Out of the box, you've got the laptop, a backpack, a sleeve, its 65W charger and an Asus Pen 2.0. Small note that the included accessories vary according to your country and region. Now, we'll get into the specs. Worldwide, there are variants of processors that come with the Duo, the Intercore Ultra 9, Ultra 5 and Ultra 7, packing in a dedicated MPU or neural processor. The unit that we have on hand runs the Intel Core Ultra 9 processor, Intel R graphics, 32 gigs of LPDDRX5 RAM, 1TB storage, a 75 watt hour battery, and everything plays out on these beautiful dual Asus Lumina OLED 3K 16x10 120Hz monitors that look and feel really good to use. Ports. This is one USB 3.2 Type A, two Thunderbolt 4s with display and power delivery, one HDMI 2.1 TMFS, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. There's quite a bit to cover with this one, but I'll get to the question everyone will be asking. Does it game? And surprisingly, yes. Well, Ish. I played Helldivers 2 on easy and it can sort of keep afloat around 30 to 44 FPS in your destroyer, but when you're on the field, particles, light, and enemy volume plays a huge part of course. I set my settings to the lowest I could and had the duo plugged in on performance mode and we got a steady 24 to 29 FPS. Again, the difficulty was on easy so the enemy count wasn't super high, but expected FPS to struggle even more with high difficulties. Of course, this wasn't made for gaming. You can get away with less intensive games like Counter-Strike 2 and Hades on lower settings and reducing the resolution. Resolution. Hell, I even managed Armor Core 6 at 40 to 60 ish FPS, and Returnal surprisingly plays alright ish. That's actually quite surprising, and you don't see that very often. But if you're thinking about Apex Legends and higher, it's a definite no go. So stick to older games or bring settings down to the lowest for more recent games. I mean, if you really want portable gaming, you can probably just get the RG Ally. It still is the most stable platform for portable PC gaming besides the Steam Deck. For creators like myself, you're able to scrub through 4K footage on the timeline pretty smoothly on full. But of course, if you want to maintain that smoothness, I just go to 1 8th or half. And exporting 10 minutes of raw 4K footage at H.264, CBR rate of 20, was about 7 minutes, which is Pretty damn decent. Though I recommend light editing work for both photos and videos. Its colors are really good by the way. But I wouldn't use this as my workhorse for content creation. Again, this is a productivity laptop that surprisingly has the hardware to run some games and for light video and photo editing work. Speaking of performance and all that, here are the numbers for some benchmarks we ran with PC Mark 10 and 3D Mark. For 3D Mark, Time Spy scored 3,088 for overall, with graphics at 2,844 and 6,011 for CPU. We also ran Night Raid, that scored 21,581 for overall, 31,247 for graphics, and 7,840 for its CPU scores. In PC Mark 10, it scored 6,781 overall, Essential scored 10,460, Productivity scored 9,913, and Content Creation scored 8,161. On the topic of power, the NP was in there to help performance of the laptop through machine learning since AI is all the rage these days. The best way to think about the MPU's role in all this is it's kind of similar to what Red Magic is doing with the R2 gaming chip. What that chip did was take off some of the processors and load off the GPU and CPU so that everything was more than evenly distributed around to increase efficiency and make your phone game better. So with the MPU, which essentially is an AI accelerator, deep learning processor, it does that but it gets exponentially more proficient at taking off processing loads and whatnot over time. So while you're getting your work done, the only thing left is to upgrade your office chair to one from Secret Lab. Here at Geek Culture, we've tested plenty of chairs, but Secret Lab gaming chairs remain one of our favorites. Whether it's for work or play, they feel great to lean back against, with their ergonomic features offering support for the whole body, from the head and back to the arms and even something for your butt. This mix of form and function helps the Titan EVO 2022 deliver the best seating experience like no other. For more information, check out secretlab.co. For those looking for a cool laptop to lay down plans and ideas with clients and get some work done, the Duo might be the answer to your needs. You've got five different configurations for the Duo, dual screen mode with the Bluetooth keyboard, dual screen with the virtual keyboard, laptop mode, which is self-explanatory. You wanna see what laptop mode is? Yeah, that's, that's laptop mode. 
desktop mode and sharing mode, which is what we're going to get into because the potential to be hella cool is right there. Besides going through slides, storyboards, or whatever you need to present to your colleagues, friends, or clients, you can also have two separate desktops working independently of each other. Say your friend needs to book flight tickets for a last minute trip, you've got them covered. Or if you've got a kid, they can watch videos while you do up your spreadsheets. Desktop mode is pretty cool on its own, being able to doom scroll on one end and doing some work on the other. Sounds like a pretty good deal. And of course, we need to talk about this kickstand, which is like key to like a few of these modes and it's pretty damn sturdy. Look at that. It Hella sturdy. Of course, don't abuse that. The on-screen keyboard is pretty sick. You gotta use six fingers to get it out there. You can adjust and change your widgets and dials according to your needs, giving you limitless customization, which I love. But more importantly, it's this Bluetooth keyboard that I actually like. It's pretty thin and unassuming, yes, but the feel it has and 1.4 millimeter key travel, it's decent sized touchpad and the fact that it's Bluetooth completes it all. You can put it on the table, on your lap. And if you want to go back to being a laptop, you just kind of just snap, just snap it back on, just like that. Also, if you're not planning on using this thing, you can just turn it off there, so slide on the side. Now, one of the last few things, the colors from the monitors are stunning. You got HDR, VESA certified display HDR True Black 500, 1.07 billion colors, Pantone validated the whole shebang, and combining those colors with its built-in speakers tuned by Armand Cardon, which by the way can go pretty loud without losing any detail, is pretty damn sick. Listening can be quite the entertainment hub. Final thoughts wise, who is it for? Students and business folk primarily. This is a productivity beast with some room for light content creation and even lighter gaming. I will admit I was very skeptical at first because I don't really enjoy the whole dual screen thing that laptops try to do. But with this, it has convinced me that it can be executed really well. There was considerable thought put into this end book and at its price point and its current specs, there aren't a lot of laptops I'd say this about, but <laughs> it's damn well justified. So if you have any questions about the Zenbook Duo, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to get to them. Don't forget to follow us on all of our socials right here to keep up to date with everything that we do. We post our content every day. And if you haven't, maybe leave a like and subscribe to us. It goes a long way in helping the channel out. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll catch you on the next one.